All right, in this video we're going to learn how to graph square root functions when there's a vertical and a horizontal shift. So let's take a look at the uh, square root function. Now the parent would be y equals the square root of x without the a, without a minus h, or without a plus k. But how do these variables actually affect our parent function? Well, if we had a positive or negative sign, we would know that it, the graph would be reflected in the x-axis. Let's write that down. So if a is less than zero, which means it's negative, then we have a reflection in the x-axis. Okay, so if it's positive, it's still going to have a curve going up in the positive direction, just like we've normally seen with the parent function, but if it's negative, it's going to reverse. Now the a, now we have to look to see if the a alone, the value of it, the digit, if it's going to be greater than 1, so we have like 1, 2, 3, 4, so a larger number than 1, then we have a vertical stretch. Now, if a, the digit, is less than 1, we're going to have a horizontal stretch. And just real quick, if I were to draw, let's draw a makeshift x, y coordinate system. Here's our y, here's our x. If our parent function looks like this, okay, our vertical stretch of a square root function would be a lot taller. And then our horizontal stretch of our square root function would be a lot shorter and closer to the x-axis. Okay, you see the difference? So this is a horizontal stretch, this is a vertical stretch. Alright, so let's take a look at what happens when we add or subtract to the x value that's in the square root in the radicand. So if we have a minus h, okay, so a negative h, you literally see a minus and then a number, that means we have a horizontal translation going to the right. So you have to kind of think of it as an opposite. So if you see x minus 5, x minus 2, x minus 1, we're really moving the entire graph to the right that many units. So if you see a plus h, then you have a horizontal translation, but just to the left. So it's opposite. Okay. So now let's see how the k, if you add a value to the square root product, um, how that affects our graph. If it's a plus k, then we're vertically translating the entire graph up that many units. So if it was plus 7, plus 10, plus 11, plus whatever, we're moving the entire graph up that many units. If it's a minus k, then we still have a vertical translation, but we're going to go down instead. So example 1, we have to graph the function y equals 3 times the square root of x minus 1 plus 2. So just taking a look at our graph right away, we can see what variables, I'm sorry, what numbers are being affected or what numbers are affecting the parent graph right away. There's a 3, we have a minus 1 in the radicand, and we also have a plus 2 outside of it. Let's identify what we know. So right now it's a positive, so we don't we, we know that the graph is not going to be reflected in the negative or in the x-axis, so it's not going to be going down like that. But the digit itself, 3, because a is greater than 1, which is 3, we know that we're going to have a vertical stretch right away. Okay, so don't worry about the points yet. We just can identify that it should be a lot taller than our parent graph. Now, within the square root, in the radicand, we have a minus 1. We're subtracting 1 from the x. So, remember, if we have a minus 1, that means we have a horizontal translation to the right, one unit. Okay, so you have to think of the opposite. So then we have a plus 2 on the outside. Well, if it's plus k or minus k, if it's plus, we're shifting or translating the entire graph that many units upward. So if we have a plus 2, that means we vertically translate the entire graph two units up. All right, so let's look at the parent function real quick. So the parent function is y equals the square root of x. So there is no... 3 in the front, there is no minus 1 in the square root, and there's no plus 2. So if I were to graph the parent function, it would look just like this. Okay, so if we're going to compare what we have to graph with the parent function, we have a vertical stretch, so it should be taller. Uh, we should be moving the entire graph to the right one unit as well as two units up. So if I look at my table in my TI-84, I'm going to graph my point right away. Well, let's start with our starting point. We moved it to the right one unit over and then two up so then there's my point 
Okay, so we have a vertical stretch, so we're expecting a graph to be going up. Uh, where's my pointer? Right here. Going up like this. Okay. So then, if I look at my table, I notice that right away, zero, I'm sorry, one, two is my starting point because anything less than one is going to draw me an error. So then I can grab my other points. I'm going to look at two, five, and also five, eight. So I'm going to plot those in my coordinate plane. So there's two, five, and here is five, eight. So notice how there is a vertical stretch. It's shifted over, over one and up two, just like we said earlier. All right, so now when talking about the domain and the range, okay, we look at our table. We're looking for if there is an actual y coordinate for the given x values. So we have a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for our x values, which represents the x's on our coordinate system, our coordinate plane. So if you look at the table, it looks like we don't even have a y coordinate at 0 when x is equal to 0. But we do have one when x is equal to 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if we're talking about our domain, we want our possible x values. Well, we don't have any x values at 0, but we, do, we can say that we have a point on the graph where x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our possible x values, our domain, is going to be x is greater or equal to 1. Now our range, we really want to focus on our y values. So our possible y values, looking at our table, it does not drop down below 2. So anything less than 2 is not going to work because we have an error there. So when x equals 0, we have an error because there's no, nothing to graph in our coordinate system here. So then if I were to identify my range, it's going to be y is greater or equal to 2. So if you look at as x is increasing, so are my y values. It's going to continue to increase as x increases as well. Okay? Alright, so hopefully from this video you are able to see how the square root function is affected if it's horizontally shifted or vertically shifted or translated or if it's vertically stretched or horizontally stretched.